Okay, so uh, good morning and thank you all for coming. I want to talk to you this morning about some high resolution imaging we do in the retina and I'm going to talk about some diseases that uh, we're looking at using that uh, resolution, uh, high resolution imaging for diagnosis and therapies, but also for looking at diseases of the brain. And so when we image, in our case, we're using the cornea and the crystalline lens as our objective, focusing the light at the back of the eye, and you can see the various vessels and other structures that are at the rear of the eye that we're most interested in. And so because of the imperfections in the optics of the eye, we have to end up using adaptive optics. Uh, and so here you see the deformable mirrors that we use that we deform by fractions of microns to correct the uh, aberrations, the optical imperfections of the eye to create a very high resolution image. And this is the result. On the left, you see a retina from uh, one of um, my uh, students, former students, uh, with uncorrected optics. And on the right, uh, the same student once the optics were corrected. And uh, so if I can get uh, the cursor here, I will show you that these individual white spots are crystalline, uh, are cones. Um, they actually uh, are the individual cells which uh, give you the um, color, the colors that you see. And there's no um, fluorescence here, no contrast agent. Uh, this is, they're all lighting up because they're waveguides. So then uh, we can take this to the next level in doing a video. And you see normal cones on the left. Here we have central serous retinos retinopathy, which is a disease. And um, I'm just having trouble starting this. This movie, here we go. And so in lower resolution, you don't see much detail to that disease. And so then I want to show you, um, whoops, <laughs> I'm having some trouble with this cursor here. Let's see. There it is, okay. So at higher resolution, we then can see the individual cones, and what's very interesting is that we see some intact cones in the diseased areas of this retina. Now, this is a very small field of view. Those individual cones are only three microns across, and so you see that um, we could use that to say when somebody is a good candidate for therapy, when they still have some intact cones in their diseased retina. Here we're using two-photon excitation to close vessels in age-related macular degeneration. And here we're using uh, our imaging to image um, malaria and hemozoan in malaria. And again, this is with polarization. So this is uh, intrinsic contrast from polarized light. And uh, we can see whether the person's uh, malaria has, in fact, uh, gone to their brain. Uh, this is of great interest in Africa, where children who are admitted in coma, they don't know whether it's their underlying malaria or whether it's another cause. Uh, the more, most recent project is to look at amyloid beta in the retina. And again, this is polarization contrast on the right here. Uh, this is an amyloid beta deposit in a retina. And uh, we can see the deposit uh, in this, not quite in the same way we would see it on the left in fluorescence, but um, very similar uh, uh, um, contrast. And so we are developing this now as an invasive, non-invasive imaging and very inexpensive imaging for the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, amyloid beta is a key diagnostic factor in Alzheimer's disease. I'm not sure what I've done to this system, but here we are. And here is the full ma Mueller matrix showing the complete polarization properties of that particular uh, deposit. And uh, in closing, I'd just like to thank all the people who support this research. Without their support, of course, uh, it wouldn't continue to go on. So thank you very much. And I'm happy